Good morning. Good morning. Uh, glad to see you, whether you're out here or glad you're joining us. If you're out there in internet land, if you are out there in the internet land, please uh, uh, comment, like, share, all that. Um, I usually tell a joke to start things off, but I'm not going to do that this morning. I, I was looking through actually Facebook, and I come upon this little <coughs> poem, and I'm going to read it today. I think it's more uh, appropriate, I guess. So it says, when I say I am a Christian, when I say I am a Christian, I'm not shouting I've been saved. I'm whispering I get lost at times. That's why I chose this way. When I say I'm a Christian, I don't speak with human pride. I'm confessing that I stumble, needing God to be my guide. When I say I am a Christian, I'm not trying to be strong. I'm professing that I'm weak and pray for strength to carry on. When I say I am a Christian, I'm not bragging of success. I'm admitting that I've failed and cannot ever pay the debt. When I say I am a Christian, I don't think I know it all. I submit to my confusion, asking humbly to be taught. When I say I am a Christian, I'm not claiming to be perfect. My flaws are all too visible, but God believes I'm worth it. When I say I am a Christian, I still feel the sting of pain. I have my share of heartache. That's why I seek God's name. When I say I am a Christian, I do not wish to judge. I have no authority. I only know I'm loved. And that's why I say I'm a Christian. Uh, the congregation of Salem Baptist Church would like to invite your congregation to the ordination service of our pastor, Brother Larry Cornelius, into the gospel ministry. Services will begin at 2 p.m. on March 20th at the Salem Baptist Church. Our March Noisy Offering is going to the Annie Armstrong Missions. Um, we will not be having a prayer meeting tonight. We're canceling that. So, uh, today through Wednesday from 6.30 p.m. to 7.30 p.m. is a spring revival at New Hartford Baptist Church. Speaker is Dr. Woody Burt. Special music each night. March 20th from 3.30 to 7 p.m. Trinity Youth Rally. March 21st at 2 p.m. is the WM meeting. Wanda Lovell is the leader. Uh, April 7th, SRBA executive board meeting. April 8th, Trinity Youth Rally fundraiser dinner. April 10th through the 17th at 6.30 p.m. Holy Week revival at Pino Baptist Church. Uh, June 4th, uh, it's a, it says no date change for Pike County Christian School annual banquet and auction. Our, said, our shoebox items are quality crafts, and the WM mission action is items for the Hope Center. Is there any other announcements? Yes, uh, Pike County Christian School Fun Day was canceled this Saturday, so they rescheduled it for the 20, what's that Saturday? 26th. 26th. Okay. So, take anybody who wants to invite the friends that you can. We're going to set up tables right after church for the dinner tomorrow if anybody would like to help. Okay. Any other announcements? Tommy goes Wednesday to pray for him to be surgeon. See if he has to have surgery or not. We're hoping not, but if he does, we'll deal with it. Uh, let's go to anniversaries or birthdays. Let's go to noisy offering.
don't have any. She decided that there was a, a new distinction between the, the grandpas that live in the house out there. She goes, I'm the I'm Papa with a hat. Yeah. And the other one's just Papa. <laughs> <laughs> He's, He's a grandpa. He's a grandpa. Well, it is a blessing to have everybody here this morning, and uh, I think we'll all agree it's been quite the week. Um, but uh, you know, we're not we're not promised that life's going to be easy, are we? What we are promised, however, maybe I wanted that. <laughs> but what we are promised is that. Jesus will be with us through it all. Right. And so with that in mind, let us go to our Lord in prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we do thank you for this day. We thank you, Father, for every soul that you pulled upon their heart to be in a place of worship this morning and that some have chosen this place as that place. We pray, Father, that you would use this service, that you would bring us closer to you. We pray, Father, that every word that comes from our mouth, whether it be in song, prayer, or the sermon, bring honor and glory to your name. For it is in the precious name of Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. Please join in our worship service and help us sing this morning. Turn first to page 560. No, excuse me, it's the wrong page. 314. 314. All hail the power of Jesus' name. Let's stand as we say. <clears throat>
our prayer this morning. Our dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day and for each one that's here today. Father, we just thank you for the many blessings that you give us each day. We thank you for your love and your care and your grace and your mercy. Father, we just pray that you be with all those that have special needs and problems and those that have lost loved ones. We just pray that you be with them and help them. Father, we just thank you for the privilege of living in your house and to worship you. And we just pray that you would bring grace and honor to you. These things we pray in Jesus' blessed name. Amen. Thank you, Alice. You can be seated. Please turn to 357. Let's sing Rescue the Perishing. 357. serve him. 374 and we'll stand on the last verse.
another day. Thank you for this evening. And thank you, Lord, for all the blessings you've given us. And bless all the sick and the homeless. And remember those that's lost loved ones to comfort them. Lord, bless the message and the offering. We pray in your name in Jesus' name. Amen. Three five five. This is the threefold truth. Christ has died. Christ. 
So last week, you might remember, um, we talked about a question that you might subconsciously ask yourself. And that question was, am I really up for this? This week, I'd like to talk about another question that I have no doubt you consciously ask yourself. And you probably do it a lot. Because you've been there, and so have I. Something's happened, something not good, and you ask yourself, why me? Why did this happen to me? Now, let me take a little sidebar here and ask a question. Have you ever asked that question when something good happened? You know, and I mean, you won the lottery. Well, God, why are you blessing me? You got that big promotion at work that so many people were just as eligible as you for. God, why me? Why are you blessing me? Why is my life so blessed? Yeah, me neither. No, when I say why me, it's always the something bad's happened. <coughs> so I do want to preface this just in case anybody goes there. Um, we are all very, very aware. Uh, well, those watching may not be aware, but those of you sitting before me are. Um, that we lost a member of our church this week. I can only speak for myself, but it hangs above me like a dark cloud. And it, but it's also important to know this, it in no way, shape or form influenced this message. This message was on my heart long before we lost our dear sister. That tells me something. That tells me that God was preparing me and preparing you for something that we were going to find very unpleasant. Somewhere along the way, We've become convinced that life is supposed to be good all the time. If you're a Christian, you may believe God is supposed to protect you from every hardship, large or small, that comes up in your life. I mean, after all, God is good. So life should be fair. I knew a gentleman, he, uh, he used to be a uh, state inspector, and he would do, he would do inspections on <coughs> different agencies, and occasionally someone would make a mistake, and their mistake was to respond to him, well, that's not fair. And his response was always, always, if you want fair, the state fair is in Sedalia in August. <laughs> but don't feel bad about asking the question because it is very, very common. And when I say the word very, imagine that in big, bold, neon letters. It is very common to ask that question. And in my research of this timeless ageless question <laughs> actually there was one there was one reference site I went to and on that one on that one site there was 16 preachers wiser than myself that answered the question not one single one of them had the same answer because it's individual isn't it Now, of course, the why me question comes in its, its varieties. Why them? Why him? Why her? Why you? But it hounds us on a daily basis. 
Now, in Jesus' time, it was thought that if something bad happened to you or a loved one, that they deserved it. That anything bad was deserved. They sinned, or someone involved with them sinned, or this was some sort of karma retribution type deal. But you know what? That same thinking still exists today. <clears throat> you don't believe me? Just watch the news. Because as soon as they said something happened, the very next thing they're saying is what the person did or what somebody else did. Now, sometimes that's, you know, like a cause and effect thing. But a lot of times, it's there's that insinuation that they deserved it. Now, in the times that we live in, they may not use the word sin. I mean, we live in a secular word, world, so they may not say that the person sinned. They may talk about karma, or they may, uh, there's an old adage that they may use, what goes around comes around. But it's the same idea, the same thought process. However you want to say it, it just isn't so. Sometimes the storms that we have to go through are the work of Satan. We didn't necessarily do anything. Job, as you all might recall, didn't deserve any of the stuff that happened to him. In John chapter 9, verses 2 and 3, we're reminded of a conversation that Jesus is uh, having with his disciples. He had just healed a blind man. And his disciples as they're, as they're leaving, the disciples turn to Jesus and they say, uh, who sinned? The parent or the man? You all remember Jesus' answer? Neither one. He said, this man went through this so that the works of God should be made manifest in him. Now that is not to say, and let me be clear about this, because some people interpret it this way, that this man went through a, I mean, he was an adult, so he went through his entire childhood into adulthood blind because God wanted to make a point. No. He was blind. God was just going to use him to make a point. Very distinct difference. But I get the why me question, because it, it's real easy. It is real easy to become depressed and to have self-pity. And we all go through it sometime or another. And the enemy wants you to believe that nothing ever works out good for you. If he can get you into that slump, if he can get you into that dark corner where you just kind of curl up, go into a fetal position, He'd love it. That's why every time something does happen to you, you start blaming yourself. You start blaming the people around you. When in truth, there may be blame, but there also may not. Was there anybody here that when you got saved, you were maybe given a card or a certificate that said your life is trouble-free from this point on? Okay, see, I thought it was just me, because I didn't get one either. We are not promised a bed of roses. But the, but the Lord does make a very wonderful promise. In John 16, 33, he's telling them about all the things that could, you know, that are going to happen. And then he says this, I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart. 
I have overcome the world. Now, to some degree, this kind of answers the why me question. Because we live in a simple world. It is what it is. Bad things happen to good people. But what we can rely on is that Jesus Christ is going to be there for us through every single one of them. He gives us that hope, he gives us that encouragement that we need to keep soaring. Because if he wasn't here, and I, I, it astounds me that those without faith can get hit by life's burdens again and again and still get up. It amazes me. But the truth is, sometimes they don't. They don't get up, or they get up, and they go through the rest of their life with an emotional limp. There's a hymn, Spirit of the Living God, and in it are these words. Break me, melt me, mold me, fill me. You know, that sounds like a wonderful prayer, doesn't it? It sounds like a, a wonderful thing. I don't know about, I, I can only speak for myself, and, and I've mentioned this to you all, but when I, when I sing a hymn, it's a pronouncement. Now, I am, I am not only singing the words up on the screen, but I am proclaiming them to my Lord and Savior. I have a problem with this. Break me? Melt me? It sounds a little painful. It sounds like it's going to hurt. But as life has shown every single one of you, it does hurt. We are, in many places in the Word of God, referred to as fine gold, a treasure. But then they also talk about the process of fine gold. The process of refining gold, it has to be purified. We have to be purified. And that process requires going through <coughs> fire. Now in gold, the process brings all the impurities to the surface and then they're, they're taking off. And you know, for us, isn't that much different? Our fires bring forth our impurities too. And with each one, we have the opportunity to become stronger in our faith with each other and closer to our Lord. So don't allow yourself to be fooled. The path that is the Christian walk, it is a glorious one, but it is not a simple one. It is not an easy one. There is going to be pain. There is going to be distress. To paraphrase 1 Peter 4, 12, tells us to not think it strange concerning the fiery trials we must suffer because these sufferings bring you closer to each other and to a greater understanding of the need of a Savior. Personally, I would rather it wasn't so. It would certainly be easier to convince people to take the Christian walk if you could tell them that from when you become a Christian from this day forward, you're pain-free. No problem. Life is one big Advil. You're never going to have pain again. 
but there's a problem in that. It's not true. It doesn't work that way. It's probably just as well. Because I saw it in my children when they were small. I saw it in my grandchildren when they were small. And truth be told, I've seen it in myself. Something simply given to me without any effort whatsoever on my part, well, it just doesn't hold the same value as if I had worked for it or if I had worked through it. I have a tool in my garage. It is an electric camera drill. I've had it four years. Used it once. I used it when I was trying to change the blades on a riding lawnmower. And those things did not want to come off. That bolt was not intimidated by me one bit. I tried everything. I tried WD-40, pen oil. I tried using the ratchet. And don't tell me, guys, you have never done this. I tried using the ratchet as a hammer. Bam, bam, bam. <laughs> no, it would not come off. And so finally, somebody convinced me, well, you know what you need is you, you, need, a, you need a ratchet hammer or a ratchet drill. And sure enough, I got one. I didn't have, I didn't have air compressor which is too bad because the air compressor drill is like yay big. The electric one is like something out of a Stallone, you know, movie. I mean, it's a big old thing. And uh, anyway, so I used it and it was like, <clears throat> are you kidding me? <laughs> you know, I, I spent days, I, I, no exaggeration, days trying to get this thing off. To the point where I thought, you know, I was starting to hurt. You know, this thing was inflicting pain on me. And within seconds, there it is. So every two years I change the blades on that thing. This year is the year. So I'll be pulling out that, that tool and be able to say that I've used it twice now. But you know what? I learned something. I learned that sometimes you need to use the right tool. I learned that sometimes you need to not be so stubborn and stop being a tool yourself. But I had to go through the process, right? No one was going to convince me, Dan, your wrench isn't going to work. Here, buy this $150 thing over here. This will do the job for you. I wasn't ready to accept that yet. Sometimes we have to learn things after having the experience. Very soon, well, actually just last week, we had, we had some beautiful days, right? Absolutely gorgeous days. How do you know that? How do you know that they were gorgeous days? Compared to the first bad one. Exactly because you compared it to the bad ones. If you hadn't gone through the winter, you wouldn't appreciate the spring. And if you don't believe me, go to Florida, where in 60 degree weather, they are wearing coats. Because they don't know. They don't know what you know. They don't know what I know. You can appreciate the spring because you've been through the winter. Hard days, hard times, they're going to happen. And when they do, why me is a natural response. But when we look through the eyes of God and we see that he is with us through these times, it may cause us now to change that question. <clears throat> Why not me? Who am I to be 
spared the pains of a sinful world. It is a sinful world, and I live in it. Who am I that I should be spared the consequences of doing so? Am I better than Paul? Paul the Apostle wrote the biggest part of this book. Am I better than him? He went through it. Maybe. Maybe I'm better than Jesus. Maybe you're better than Jesus. Because he went through it. No. In truth, nobody on this planet goes without some degree of pain. Some of it you can see. Some of it you don't. Doesn't mean they're not going through it. I have a great appreciation for the comedian uh, Robin Williams. Yes, the guy got vulgar, but man, was he smart. He saw things in situations that just blew my mind. I forget now who it was, but some close friend of his committed suicide. And he was on national TV, and they asked him what he thought about it. Robin Williams made the comment, uh, suicide is a permanent solution to a temporary problem. Yeah, that's pretty good. And yet, years later, Robin Williams would commit suicide. He was going through some stuff. He was going through some pain. He was making everybody around him laugh. And he himself is crying. You're going to run into people like that this week. <clears throat> so maybe when we ask that question, we can pause for a moment and make it a little more positive. Because, you know, the truth is there's nothing wrong with asking God questions. But there is a very big difference between asking God questions and questioning God. Very different. God, what do you want me to learn from this? God, how is this experience going to lift up your name? God, how do you receive the glory in what is happening? Those are good questions. Many of you can't see it, but this little picture here in the corner, it says, why me, Lord? And then it says under it, don't answer that. It's a quote by Charles Schultz. Anybody remember who Charles Schultz is? Peanuts, right? Creator of Peanuts, Charlie Brown and crew. The televangelist Robert Schuller said that within every adversity lies a sleeping possibility. C.S. Lewis said, God whispers to us in our pleasures, but shouts to us in our pain. We have a tendency to want to negotiate with God, to accuse God, to bargain with God, to even shake our fist at God. But sooner or later, we have to bow before God and accept the good and the bad. But however we approach God, do approach God. Hurt can draw us closer to God, to others, and yes, even to ourselves. This hurt sometimes makes you see things in yourself that you did not know. 
Paul said in Philippians, he says, I know both how to be abased and I know how to abound. Everywhere and in all things I am instructed both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. I read somewhere about this sign. And the sign said, Christians are like tea. Their strength does not come out until they are in hot water. There's some truth to that, actually. We don't know ourselves. We don't know our potential. We don't know our courage, our faith, our strength in Jesus until some crisis brings it out. And I wish I could tell you that all you have to do is take what I've just said now and, and, and you're good. Just next time something bad happens to you, think, oh yeah, well, you know, Dan said don't uh, to look for the rainbow in the rain. Okay, I'm, I'm good. It's okay. No, it's not. It's still going to hurt. You're still going to have problems and pain. But just knowing that the suffering is part of life makes it easier. Makes it better rather than bitter. And helps you to prepare for those times ahead. Self-pity is understandable, but quite honestly, it is a burden. It is a hindrance to your growth. It is a hindrance to my growth. And the truth is, we don't have to be self-pitiful. Is that a word? Because we have Jesus Christ who has promised to always be with us. And he does that not because of who we are, but because of who he is. Brother Jim? Five hundred forty-four. Have thy own way, Lord. 544. Let's stand, please. Thank you. 
As far as uh, announcements, I do uh, encourage you all to uh, visitation for Elaine is at four o'clock this afternoon at Waters Funeral Home. Her service is tomorrow morning at 10. I know the family would appreciate it for those of you who are able to be there. The, uh, after the service, they will have a um, committal at the graveside and then they will have dinner here uh, if you can, before leaving today, if you can help set up downstairs, I know that would also be appreciated. Um, we are not going to have the service tonight um, because of the visitation and the expectation that it, even though it's not slated to go that long, there is that possibility that it will. And so we don't want anybody feeling rushed to try to get back over here. So we will not have our prayer meeting tonight. Um, are there, are the New Hartford revival starts tonight um it runs through wednesday encourage you to be a part of that if uh, if you are so led are there any other announcements that they're repeating or may not have been mentioned earlier actually i do have one i'm sorry was there somebody else yeah um my dad is in the nursing home that he's going back to quincy he's going to quincy to have a procedure done and they said this is the last um, thing they can try to do um, to get him back and not be shocked so much. They, they've exhausted the medicines, and, but hopefully this uh, procedure will go well and they'll be fine. Yeah. So please continue to keep Fred in your prayers. Um, I know I really don't need to tell you that, but please do. And uh, actually, the other thing I got to mention, I'm going to mention... Uh, off air, I suppose is the way to put it. Um, so, Carl, would you mind giving our uh, our closing prayer, please? Our gracious Heavenly Father, please be with us as we go about your business during the week. Uh, give us your comfort in our times of sorrow. Strengthen us in those times when it's hard to go on. Uh, be with us and help us to set an example for other people and show your love through us. In Jesus' blessed name we pray. Amen. Amen.